My name is Mike Trethaway. I'm Chief Economist with InterVistas Consulting, an aviation, transportation, and tourism consultancy. I'd like to address it and challenge three key myths about airport charges, and then provide some commentary on potential new policy directions that would provide greater benefits to the traveling public. The myths are that first, airport charges are growing. Second, that because they are growing, they have an outrageous impact on airline ticket costs. And third, that heavy handed regulation of airport charges is needed to constrain airport charges. All of these myths are not borne out by evidence. Let me address the first myth, which is the claim that airport charges are growing. This myth is not true. The fact is that since 2014, airport charges have fallen in real terms, meaning inflation adjusted terms. Over that five year period, on average, inflation adjusted charges declined 20%. This observation of declining real airport charges is true whether we use data from airports on the revenues they receive, or if we use data from the airlines on the amounts that they pay to airports. We also observe declining inflation adjusted airport charges, whether we look individually at landing fees or at passenger charges. Charges are declining in real terms. The second myth is that airport charges are a large portion of ticket costs. This myth is also not supported by the evidence. We collected data on the global average one-way fare before taxes and airport charges. We compared this to the average airport charge and find that airport charges on average are only 5.1% of the global average one-way fare. When we do this computation, it's important that airline ticket price includes not merely the airline's base fare, but also the various ancillary charges that passengers pay. Over the past decade or so, airlines have introduced new fees for services like check baggage or advanced seat assignments that formerly were provided to passengers in the base fare. It is no longer appropriate to make comparisons of airport charges only to base fares. The additional amounts that passengers actually pay to the airlines should be included in the comparison to airport charges. It is the all-in fare, including charges for ancillary services, that passengers respond to when they make travel decisions. The amount of ancillary charges paid by passengers will vary, of course. Our chart uses a global average. Overall, we see that airport charges are a very modest share of the all-in ticket price. The third myth claims that because airline charges have been growing and are a large share of the ticket price, heavy-handed regulation of airport charges is needed. That is, regulation results in lower airport charges. We have already seen that the premise of the third myth is incorrect. Airport charges are not growing, they are declining. And airport charges are only a small share of the average ticket price, especially when the new ancillary charges that passengers pay to airlines are considered. Thus, the basis for the conclusion that airport charges should be heavily regulated doesn't hold. We can look at this in a bit more detail. If regulation results in lower airport charges, one would expect to observe lower airport charges at regulated airports, but this is not the case. My team looked at the average airport charge per passenger, including landing, terminal, and passenger-based charges for two categories of airports. First, we looked at those airports that were heavy-handed and or price cap regulated, and then we looked at those airports that were either not regulated or only had light-handed regulation. What we found is that the regulated airports on average actually had higher charges per passenger. Now there's many factors that go into explaining differences in charges among airports, but if regulation was effective in lowering airport charges, one might expect the regulated airports on average would have lower charges per passenger. This is not the case. The airports with no regulation or light-handed regulation had lower charges. One factor that might explain the paradoxical result of heavily regulated airports having higher charges is that such airports might be the airports with the largest capital expenditures for maintaining and expanding airport infrastructure. That is also not the case. On average, airports with light-handed or no regulation spend more per passenger on capital. 
So this third miss is also not supported by the evidence. We looked at one other aspect about regulation and airport charges. That is the issue as to whether airports with single till policies have lower charges. Now to explain this, I point out that airport revenues are divided into two categories, aeronautical and non-aeronautical charges. Aeronautical revenues are from fees paid by airlines for runway use, landing fees, and fees paid for terminal use, terminal fees. Aeronautical charges also include any fees assessed on passengers and are typically added to the ticket price. An example is the passenger facility charge assessed by U.S. airports and the airport improvement fee assessed in Canada, Bermuda, and some other countries. Airports in other nations also assess passenger fees. The other category of revenue is non-aeronautical revenues, and these are net income airports receive from purchases by passengers for food, beverage, retail in the terminal, and automobile parking, as well as net income from fees charged to ground transport providers such as taxis. Now let's turn to the concept of airport tills. For dual till airports, Aeronautical charges are set to generate revenues that fully pay for annual airport aeronautical costs. For single-till airports, net non-aeronautical income is used to partially offset aeronautical costs, and at least in theory, doing so results in lower landing terminal and passenger fees. However, once again, the evidence doesn't support the contention that single-till airports have lower charges. The chart from the annex of the ACI policy brief on airport charges shows that airport charges per passenger are not lower for single till airports. It appears that the single and dual till airports have similar charges, at least as a global average. Interestingly, hybrid tills seem to have lower charges. In interviews with airport managers, they suggested that at single till airports, there's little incentive to develop non-aeronautical revenues as there's no net gain for the airport. In contrast, dual-till airports have strong motivation for management to grow traffic and generate non-aeronautical revenues. They do this in part by keeping aeronautical charges low and engaging in active marketing of the airport to potential airlines. As we have learned from the recent experience with the COVID-19 crisis, Non-aeronautical revenues have provided better revenue stability to many airports. To sum up and clearly state the evidence regarding the myths about airport charges, the evidence does not indicate that those airports that have been regulated or are single till actually provide a benefit of lower airport charges. Certainly each airport is unique, but the global evidence simply does not support the contention of the myth that regulation lowers charges. One other regulatory issue regards an important lesson from the experience of airports with the COVID-19 crisis. Airports are now perceived as having higher risk for equity and debt investors. A recent report by Oxera revealed that the equity beta factors for several major European airports have increased significantly by over 50%, whereas that was not the case for selected utilities. For those airports that are regulated, the regulator needs to recognize going forward that a higher weighted average cost of capital needs should be used when assessing airport charges. Having examined and dismissed the three myths about airport charges, it's time to rethink airport charges policies. A new approach to airport charges should be considered. The original and still current airport charges policy was developed in the 1940s and 1950s. But the aviation industry has dramatically transformed since then. Aircraft technology has progressed by several generations of increasingly larger, faster, quieter, and more efficient aircraft. It's dramatically larger than the handful of flights that were operated in the 1940s, an era with limited intercontinental flying. Airlines since then have been deregulated and privatized. Airports have been privatized and or commercialized. Both airlines and airports have made major advances in technologies and management practices. Both are now commercially focused. The time has come to adopt policies that ensure the efficient use and development of airport infrastructure is for the benefit of the traveling public. The key issues that need to be addressed are twofold. First, airport charges should only be regulated when there would be a true net benefit to the traveling public. And secondly, 
Airports should be allowed to implement charges based incentives to address key issues facing the industry today. These issues include increasing economic and social connectivity, increasing non-aeronautical revenues to help stabilize airport revenues in times of crisis, generating sufficient revenues to cover needed capital maintenance and investment, controlling the congestion of an increasing number of airports, providing incentives to reduce noise impacts created by aircraft using the airport, and incenting a reduction in aviation's carbon and other emissions impacts. Australia provides an interesting example of how this transformation can take place. Prior to 2002, Australia used heavy-handed regulation of its major airports. In that year, the government decided to end active regulation and instead adopt monitoring of airport charges and airport customer service. The Australia Productivity Commission is mandated by the government to conduct periodic reviews roughly at five-year intervals as to whether airport charges should once again be subjected to heavy regulation. The Commission, however, has repeatedly found that there is no justification or net benefit to reintroduce heavy-handed regulation. If an airport were to be considered for regulation of charges, a few steps are required. It is not enough to merely determine that there is potential for the airport to have market power. The evidence needs to be conclusive that market power is actually being abused. High charges due to needed capital expenditures or service improvements is not by itself justification for imposing regulation. And given that regulation is expensive and has long run disincentives, the cost benefit analysis must be undertaken to determine whether they would actually be a net benefit to the traveling public. Finally, in the few cases where regulation would be justified, it should be light-handed. Going forward, a new approach to charges is needed. Airport charges should only be imposed when a cost-benefit study demonstrates that it would produce a net benefit to the traveling public. And secondly, airports should be allowed to introduce incentive charges to grow economic and social connectivity, to provide incentives to control airport congestion, at the growing number of airports with this problem and to incent reductions in noise impacts of aircraft and to reduce emissions.